Well, it's the best Christmas present anybody could wish for. You know, it's been a long awaited, as you say, a long awaited Christmas present, but you know, we have to put all that behind us now and look to the future and make sure that the school for the community is the best that we can possibly get mm. um, for, for the, the future of our children. Uh, like we said then, sewage overflow problems, mm. no sporting facilities. It's had a real impact, not just on the teachers, but on the pupils. So moving forward, what are you most looking forward to? I know that you're a sporting person yourself. Mm. You instill sporting principles in your pupils. Is that one of the biggest things for you? Health and safety of children is the most important thing. And, and, and that's been the biggest issue because you're trying to make sure that everybody's safe. So you're concentrating on, on that more than anything else. Mm. So all those things that you're talking about, of course, but you've got a background of um, difficulties, of safety, and of the health of the children. So it takes your eye off the other stuff, yeah. because the most important thing is, is those children and what happens to them. But, you know, going forward, we've got Grants and Sport England for a, a 60 by 40 floodlit uh, multi-use games area. We, we've got... Um, women's football FA coming having a look at to see whether or not they could put facility yeah. facility on this on, on, on our grounds so the future's uh, not that future orange eh? you know the, fu the, the future's great yeah you know and all, all we can do is, is build on what we've what we've already got in terms of the success of the sport and mm. and the, the prowess of our children and whatever going forward but it's you know it, it's important to get your head round um, that safety is, is, is paramount. Yeah, and while the future looks bright, why do you think it's taken so long for this to resolve, especially considering all the problems it's caused and you know, your local councillors and those in charge can see directly what is happening? Well, as you say, when, when, um, when we're eight years down the process, you've got to ask a question, who, what and why? Um, and my view is that there should be um, an investigation really into um, why we're in this position because once the DFE have said your, your school's been rebuilt, everything between 2015 and now has been wrong because evidently what we'd said in 2015 um, has now been born to be the truth and correct. Um, and so the, the, the processes um, that go on in procurement to getting contractors in, to hold them to account more than anything else, needs to be looked at. You know, we're okay now and we'll be, we'll be great going into the future, but it can't happen again. Mm. You know, people, you've got to learn lessons uh, from issues like this. Eight years to get a school that was deemed to be non-compliant which is illegal, yeah. non-compliant with building and fire regulations is fundamentally wrong. Yeah. So it's about accountability then. You want people to be accountable for the lack of decisions made or the lack of action, even though we're moving into bright times, so to speak. Well, history always informs the future, doesn't it? You know, and you can't, you've got to look back to make sure that you're doing the right things going forward. And this should be a, a wake up call for a lot of people um, not just in shame, because there ought to be a lot of that felt, because the pressure and the stress, not just the frustrations, but the pressure and the stress of managing buildings where lots and lots of children, hundreds of children, depend on each decision that you take, mm. is, is fundamental. And, and, you know, we're still here and still standing. Um, but it takes an awful lot of determination, courage in many ways, because you have to stand up and be principled enough and, and have the right values to make sure that you're not bound by um, the, the views, the wrong views of others. Yeah, you've been, over, well, you've been a teacher here for over 20 years now. Is 25 years. 25 years, there we go. So it's, you know, this must have taken it out of you as a head teacher with all your other responsibilities and then this lingering over your head. Do you mm. feel now, I don't know when you're going to retire, but do you feel like this is your time when you think, I've done what I can, so to speak? Do you feel, do you feel like you can move on now from it? Well, it, there's always times to move on and, and I wasn't moving anywhere until um, we got confirmation that the, the building was secure 
uh, the children were secure, their education secure, and, and you know, as you alluded to in the, in, in the first sentence, you know, that we have the best sporting facilities yeah. that our community um, can get their hands on. Yeah. You know, we're, we're a fantastic sporting community across Denton. You know, you look at all the schools in Denton that, that are at the top, if you like, of, of competition, of getting children involved in sport in general. You know, Denton schools are up there. Um, and we've managed to keep our noses above above everyone else's, yep. even without the sporting facilities that we uh, that we clearly need. Mm, and you've certainly produced a lot of sporting stars, uh, most notably recently, Reece Bennett making his magic yeah. debut in, uh, in the mid-season friendly against yeah. Rail Betis. That must be quite a, a good thing for you. you. Must be proud of him. Well, fan- he's fantastic and, and deserves it. And deserves it because he's such a nice lad. He's got his feet on the ground. He's got the humility that lots of lots of footballers or people in the limelight yeah. seem to seem to um, shy away from. But to, to have him running out in a Manchester United shirt at the final was enough. And and the first morning, as you know, the first morning he chose to uh, bring the FA Youth yeah. Trophy into school and let the children run about the playground with it. Yeah. It, you know, it, that just shows you the level of the uh, of the young man. And yeah. He'll go on from strength to strength. You know, making his making his debut, and and training with the first team and playing with the first team, yeah, yeah he'll do it. Hopefully, he can insert himself into the first team uh, in the not too distant future. But just finally, when does the building process actually start? Obviously, now you've had the approval. When will that begin? Do you know? Um, well, it, it says twenty twenty three on the uh, on the letter that we that, right. that gave us that information. Um, we are on the urgent urgent list, so we'll have to wait and see. But they've got to. Uh, there'll be all sorts of reports being done. There's there's been report after report after report done here, which got us, you know, to the to that um, to that end result. But um, there'll have to be studies done about where a new school will be built, yeah. the designs of it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's fingers crossed. We've had a good Christmas. Let's look forward to a great New Year. 